Hey, what's up guys? This is Greg with ASUS ROG, and in this video, we're gonna be doing a gaming system build, but not just any system. This is a mini ITX Z390 system build, and uh, it's all kind of built around our ROG Strix Z390i gaming motherboard. And uh, of course, we also wanna utilize the latest Intel CPU. This is a ninth generation Intel Core i7 9700K. Uh, so that'll be good for this system. Um, also, keeping that CPU nice and cool is the ROG Ryu All-in-One CPU Cooler. This is the 240 millimeter version, and it should fit perfectly in that case and keep that CPU nice and cool. Now, the next component we wanna take a look at is probably one of the most important for a gaming system is the graphics card. We're utilizing the uh, GeForce RTX 2080 Turbo Edition by ASUS. Now, the Turbo Edition has a blower style fan, uh, which we'll show you in a bit, uh, but that's kind of perfect for small form factor builds with kind of limited airflow. Um, although there is pretty good airflow in this case, and we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, powering the whole system is the Corsair RM850X power supply. 850 watts is uh, probably more than enough than we need for this system, but that's kind of what you want to do when you're coming up with a system build and how much power you need. You want to kind of um, get a little higher than your need because you don't want it to be working at maximum um, power all the time. Uh, now, our friends over at Cable Mod were nice enough to send over a whole set of sleeved cables for us, uh, so it's going to look really cool. Uh, they, they even sent us over some uh, sleeve SATA cables, so I don't know if this is a new product they make, but it's the first time I'm building with these and uh, it should be fun. Now, the last components that we want to take a look at here, we're using a Intel M.2 SSD, it's the uh, 6 series, so that should be plenty of fast, uh, 512 gigabyte. And then we're also using a uh, Toshiba OCZ uh, one terabyte drive SSD, um, kind of to store all of our games and everything. So that'll be cool. And then last, but certainly not least, is the uh, G-Skill Trident Z RGB memory. And this has RGB lighting on the top that works with our AuraSync RGB lighting on the motherboard. So we can control the lighting on this directly through our AuraSync software. Really cool, it's a 16 gigabyte kit, uh, 3200 uh, megahertz. So that should be plenty enough for a gaming system in this day and age. Um, oh, and the case, of course. This is the NZXT H200i. Now the I means that it has a little uh, module on the back that controls the for the fan control and the uh, RGB lighting. There's an RGB lighting strip built in there. And you can of course add additional ones if you'd like to. Now let's go ahead and get started. I think the only tool I'll need is my trusty screwdriver. Um, and uh, the first thing we're gonna do is tear down this case, take off all the side panels, and get it ready to receive all this hardware. Now this front panel is kind of difficult to get off, I think just because it's a brand new case. You kind of just have to give it a good yank and it'll come right off. It's held on with just these pressure clips right here. Now we're also going to remove the um, dust filter in the front. I actually don't think we're gonna be able to use this um, because of how we're gonna be setting up the fans and the liquid CPU cooler, so I'll just toss that. So now I think we're ready to go ahead and prep the motherboard and uh, get that installed here. So the first thing we're gonna do is install the CPU. I like to install it before I put the motherboard in the case, uh, just because there's more room to work with. Now to make sure it's oriented correctly, there's a little triangle on the bottom left hand of the CPU. That matches up with this little dot on the motherboard itself. Let's go ahead and drop that in. This black cover just pops right off and we're ready to go. All right, so this motherboard has a built-in rear I.O. shield, uh, so that makes its installation really easy. Go ahead and pop it right in there. And the motherboard is just held in place by four screws, which of course come with the case. All right, so we've got our motherboard in here with the CPU. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and install the power supply. Now this case, comes with a bracket installed for a small form factor power supply, but since we're using regular size power supply, we're gonna have to remove that, so let's go ahead and do that.
All right, so the power supply is in. Next thing we're gonna do is install the liquid CPU cooler and the radiator and fan. So let's go and get started on that. So the first thing we'll do is install the back plate here. Uh, it has these four um, sockets here that the standoffs will screw into, and those just go through the motherboard in these four holes. There we go. So the next step, we're gonna go ahead and install these four standoffs, and these uh, have the same threads on both sides. I'm just gonna go ahead and screw these into the back plate here. So next we'll go ahead and install the pump unit, and this already has thermal paste pre-applied, so you don't need to add any thermal paste, it just kind of goes right on. Now that we've got the pump bracket on all the standoffs, we're just going to hold it down with these uh, thumb screws here. And then we can finish them off with a screwdriver, but you don't want to over tighten these, just get them down until you kind of feel a little bit of resistance, and you'll be good to go. All right, next we're going to go ahead and install the radiator. And uh, we're going to have the radiator on the front, on the rear of the chassis, and the fans are going to be on the outside of the chassis, pulling in cool air from the outside and blowing them through the radiator. Okay, so we got our fans on. Let's go ahead and take the fan cables, and we'll run them up here to the rear so we can get those plugged in to the uh, outputs on the CPU pump. All right, so next we'll go ahead and unravel the cables here connected to the CPU pump. And these are uh, power for the pump and fans. And then this you plug into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. And then these are the uh, power cables for the fans. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run these to the rear of the board through here. So these are coming directly from the CPU pump and these are gonna power the fans on the front of the radiator there. And then this is our main power connection for the CPU pump. We're gonna plug that into a uh, SATA cable coming from the uh, power supply in just a minute. All right, last cable we'll need to plug in for the CPU pump is uh, this four pin header. It goes right into the CPU uh, pump fan header down here. But before I do that, uh, since this cable is gonna be visible, I'm gonna just wrap it around this screwdriver here to kind of make it look a little nicer and be a little tidier. Now before it gets too crowded in here, we're gonna go ahead and install the M.2 SSD. We'll start by removing the heat sink. We're gonna go ahead and put in the M.2 at about a 45 degree angle. Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten it down with the screw, tiny screw that comes with the motherboard. All right, now we'll go ahead and replace the heat sink. Now the heat sink is there because when M.2s are working hard, they can heat up. And when they heat up, they can throttle down so you get slower speed. So the heat sink will help dissipate that heat, keep everything running as fast as it can. All right, so we've got most of our components installed. I think now it's time to uh, grab the cable mod cables and uh, go ahead and get everything hooked up to the power supply. And we'll also run all the cables from the front I.O. to the motherboard. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And like I said, cable mod hooked us up with these sleeve cables and they're gonna look awesome. You know what? There's not that much room in here to access all of the plugs on the back. So what I'm gonna do is take the power supply out, plug in all the cables I think I'm gonna need, and then put it back in. All right, so this is our 24 pin cable here. Our CPU power cable. PCIe, and then SATA power for our CPU cooler and fans, and then one more SATA power connection for our SSD. So this should be all of the PSU cables that we need, so we'll go ahead and position the power supply back into place, and then we'll lock it down with a few screws. All right, so power supply is back in place, now we're going to run all of these cables around to the front so you can plug them into the motherboard. Uh, so we'll start with the CPU power connection. It's gonna be easier if we split it to uh, fit it through this tight, tight space here. And then of course our 24 pin uh, motherboard connection here. And the PCIe power for the graphics card will go right through the bottom here. 
All right, then we'll run a SATA power cable through the front here for our SSD once we're ready for that. All right, so I've cleaned up the cables back here a little bit, but uh, we need a SATA power uh, cable here for the, uh, this is for the liquid CPU cooler here. And then this is for the uh, NZXT fan controller. So that controls the top and the rear fan as well as the LED light strip that's inside the case already. All right, next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and plug in all of the front IO connectors. So first we've got the front USB 3.0 connections. Next we've got the HD audio connection. And we've got the front panel, which is the power button, reset switch, and the uh, hard drive activity LED. While we're in here, we'll go ahead and connect the CPU cooler to our motherboard via the USB header. Now the USB header is a little tricky. I'm gonna run the cable down below the memory here, or where the memory will be once we install that, through the back and then up through the bottom in order to reach the USB header over here. It's a little tricky, but it should all work out in the end. Now, one issue you might see is that these cables are in front of the PCIe slot where the graphics card's gonna go. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna run all the cables off to the side here and through this little gap. I know it looks like it's not gonna work right now, but trust me, it'll be fine. So now that we've got almost everything plugged in, wired up, it's time to install the remaining pieces of hardware here. So that includes the memory, the graphics card, and the SSD, and we'll be ready to boot it up. So next, we use this bracket here to install the two and a half inch SSD. So before we attach the SSD to the chassis here, we're gonna wanna go ahead and plug in the SATA data cable and the power connection, because it's gonna be near impossible once you actually attach it to the chassis to get these cables plugged in. Now last but certainly not least, we'll go ahead and install our NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080. Okay, good to go. All right, there we go. All the components are in. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Go and get this plugged in, and see if everything works. All right, power supply's on. The lights on the motherboard came on, so that's a good sign. Okay, it's on. All the fans are going. We've got all the LEDs going, and uh, even the LCD screen on the CPU cooler is going, so I think we're good to go. Um, the next step is we're gonna go ahead and clean up some of the cable management in the rear here, and uh, put on all the side panels, get it hooked up to this monitor back here and install some software and get this thing ready for some gaming. I think we're also gonna go ahead and do, try some overclocking with this and uh, see how, what kind of performance we can get out of this tiny system. So I wanna thank you guys very much for watching. If you have any questions about this build or any of our other products, please reach out to us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash rog.n.america. See you next time.